Hi, my name is Kmod. This podcast is brought to you by Majua Tivet College, and it specifically relates to financial accounting and four. In this presentation, I'm hoping to assist students with debtors control account. I'd like to look at one of the previous question papers, which was written on the 10th of June 2016. Question one specifically required candidates to prepare the debtors control account. I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet to illustrate the preparation of the debtors control account. Without wasting your time, I'd like us to go to the given information as per the question. Question one related to coastal traders and cut dates were required to use the given information below to draft the debtors control account in the general ledger. Cut dates were specifically required to present the balance on 31st of May 2015. That was the given information. I clearly want to emphasize that not all information impacts the preparation of the debtors control accounts. So it's important that uh, students have fundamental uh, principles in preparation of various accounts. As you'd see that uh, certain information relates to other accounts. For argument's sake, if you look at balances on 1st of May, you see you're given two balances. One of the balances relevant to preparation of debtor's control account. However, the other balance relates to creator's control account. Therefore, you wouldn't have used the balance relating to creator's control account in preparation of the debtor's control account. The same logic is applicable to the, to the rest of the given transactions. Without wasting your time, I'd like to take you to the Excel spreadsheet that we're going to use to prepare the debtor's control account. Just uh, quick fundamental principles pertaining to the preparation of the T account. Um, you need to remember that any T account would have a debit and a credit side. A debtor's is referred to as an asset, and as a result, asset increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. So those are the fundamental principles pertaining to a debtor's control account. And one other thing is that naturally debtors has what we call a debit balance. Therefore, the opening balance of debtors will be reflected on the debit side of debtors control account. And the closing balance will be reflected on the credit side. The purpose of the preparation of debtors control account for the purpose of this exercise is to determine what we call the closing balance for the month. And the closing balance for the month will be referred to as the balance uh, brought down and it will be the opening balance for the month of June. Remember, we want to prepare the closing balance for the month of May. Without wasting your time, let's quickly go to the given transactions. There you go. Uh, the first transaction relates to debtors control account and it consists of balances. So it's balance, this is the opening balance. So I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to take it to the debit side, I've already explained that the opening balance will be taken to the debit side. It was 45,000, 45,500. I'm going to take it to the debit side. I'm going to call the description, it's called balance as it relates to the balance. Just quickly, let's explain our cosmetic columns. Remember, we have that column, we have that column, the description column, the other column, and we also have the amount column. I'm going to start there. That column communicates the date. It's, it's always important to tell the users of financial information or financial statements, uh, uh, dates pertaining to each transaction. So the balance was for May, that's the month of May, 2015. There you go. And this column, I'm going to use it for a specific uh, day. So it was on the 1st of May. There you go. And that column, we're going to use it, uh, it's a folio column. We're basically going to provide uh, folio numbers. In this case, this is a balance, and it's the balance brought down, beginning uh, balance. So we're going to indicate by BD. That's referred to as the folio number relating to that uh, balance. Moving along swiftly, let's go to the next transaction. As I've mentioned, that transaction relates to creators. We're not going to take into account. Now, we're quickly going to go to our cash receipt journal and see if there are any transactions specifically relating to debtors. 
That transaction is the only transaction that impacts uh, debtors. The rest of the transaction impacts different uh, accounts. Therefore, I'm going to focus my attention on that uh, transaction in preparation of the debtors control account. This is a cash receipt journal. What it means is that the business will receive cash from its debtors. When the business receives cash from its debtors, uh, the debtors balance will be decreased. Therefore, that amount will be taken to the debit side of debtors. So I'm going to take it to the debit side. 50,400. Remember, bank, the bank of the business is increasing. So this is a contra account. Remember, in accounting, we employ what we call the double entry system. For every credit, there has to be a debit. Remember that the debit relating to this amount will be reflected in the bank uh, T account, but in this case, we're not required to do the bank T account, hence you're not seeing the debit side. But to cut the story short, to complete the double entry system, this was going to be reflected in the debit side of the bank. It makes sense because bank is an asset, it increases on the debit side, and if we receive, if the business receives cash from its debtors, uh, the cash relating to the business will increase and that will be reflected by placing a debit on the bank account. We're going to, I just want to write the uh, folio number. Remember, it relates to cash received journal. That's the source. So we're going to say CRJ. CCRJ. So if you have a manager and they were to inspect the debtors control account, they'll know for certain that that relates to the cash receipt journal cause of that folio number. Okay, moving along swiftly, let's go to the next transaction. Let's write the date as well. I'm going to write May. Remember, we're doing the month of May in 2015. Let me open it a little. I'm not able to open that. Apologies, I need to go there. Let me copy. Okay, let me write the date again. So it's May 2015. Still doesn't reflect, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to copy, I'm going to paste it there. Okay, let's open it. Okay, not a problem. I'm wasting time. I'm just going to leave it blank, but I wanted to write uh, May uh, 2015 to indicate that the transaction occurred within that month. We're not given specific dates, so I'm going to write the 31st because we want to obtain the balance uh, on the 31st. We're still having problems. I'm just going to leave it because I don't want to waste your time. But essentially, I would have written dates in there. Let's quickly go to see other transactions. There aren't any transactions specifically relating to the cash receipt journal that affect status. Moving along swiftly, cash payments. Uh, cash payments, we do have something that specifically affects status because it, it arose from cash payments. It will be taken to the debit side. It will be taken to the debit side. And our bank will be impacted in the sense that our bank will uh, decrease. Um, so if you go to the bank account, you'll see that amount reflected on the credit side of the bank account because a bank is decreasing because uh, the business is making payments that is due to debtors for whatever reason. And that uh, it's attributable to the C CPJ. There you go. The same logic applies uh, in, 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 in regards to the logic behind the CPJ. Remember, so that the auditors or, or just any other accountant can be able to trace exactly the source relating to the transaction. Next transactions relate to uh, creators general. None of those transactions impact the preparation of the debtors control account.
None of those transactions I'll highlight for ease of reference impact the preparation of the debtor's uh, control account. I mean, it's quite clear it relates to creators, it's creators' allowance. I don't even want to waste your time and talk about it. None of those transactions impact the preparation of debtor's control account. There you go. You're always given a hint. Debtors, definitely this will um, affect the debtor's control account. We're given two uh, transactions or two amounts. One relates to sales. The other relates to cost of sales. Remember, we're specifically told that the entity employs the variable markup on costs. Um, so your debtors will be sold at a profit. So, so, so when we sell to debtors, when the business sells to debtors, they'll sell their stock at a profit. So we're going to take that amount because our debtors is, is, is at cost plus a profit portion to arrive at the selling price. So we're going to take that amount. This relates to sales uh, that were for credit by the business. So it increases our asset called debtors. I'm going to take it to the debit side. There you go. And this, the contra account will be sales. So essentially, if you go to your sales uh, T account, you realize that that amount will be reflected on the credit side of the sales T account. Remember, sales is part of equity or sales is an income. It increases on the credit side. Therefore, the double entry system would have been completed. And this relates to debtors journal. So my folio number is going to simply be DJ, debtors journal. Moving along swiftly. Let's go to the next set of transaction. It relates to debtors allowance. Uh, the same rationale applies. We, we're going to take um, the debt. We're not going to take the one that relates to costs of sales, but we're going to take that one. And that one uh, reduces debtors so we're going to take it to the credit side of debtors to reflect a reduction there you go and the folio number will be debtors d for debtors a for allowance j for journal please read debtors journal and the description will be debtors allowance remember this is a contra account what essentially it means is that for us to complete the double entry system, the debit would have been taken to what we call the debtor's allowance. Moving along swiftly, the last transactions we're going to deal with relates to general journal. So this is these are what we call sundry debtors. We're specifically told to take the 240 to the debit side. Let's do exactly that. 240 to the debit side and we specifically told to take the 75 to the credit side just a quick emphasis we're not going to take the creditors ledger once more again as it doesn't relate to the debtors ledger however that's going to be taken the 240 and the 75 because it specifically relates to debtors and we specifically told where exactly to reflect it the folio number will be general journal so G for general, J for general. Exactly G, J. There you go. And this relates to sundry debtors. Sundry debtors. So these are small, just your small debtors. Okay, let me just copy this, copy this, and paste. Remember, it relates to sundry debtors. There you go. There you go. Sundry debtors. I'm not sure if you're able to see that, but it should read sundry debtors. Am I able to open it a little? Let's see. Um, I think, yeah, let me just keep it there, but it's supposed to say sundry debtors. And that's it. Now we're at the end where we've taken into account all those transactions. Now we're at the end. Remember of the purpose of the preparation of debtors control account in this case was to determine the closing balance. That is the balance that will be taken to the month of June. How we're going to determine the balance is we're going to um, make sure that the debit side equals to the credit side. At the moment, the debit side is not equals, that's the debit side is not equals to the credit side. 
I'm not sure if you're able to see that they're not equal. So we're going to obtain what we call a balancing figure. Um, we have to determine the balancing figure on the credit side because we want the credit side at the end of the day to be equal to the debit side. So essentially, we're going to we're going to take I'm going to say equals to. This is just basic math. You're going to take the total of the debit side. Okay, allow me to do it here. So I'm going to say equals to, I'm going to take the total of that. I'm going to, to minus the total of the credit side. There you go. So we've determined that our closing balance is 102,895. And I'm going to call the description will be balance. Remember that's exactly what we wanted to determine. It will be C D because it's balance carried down. Remember this is the closing balance in June. It will be reflected as the opening. It's the closing balance in, in May. Sorry, it's the closing balance at the end of May. It will be reflected as the opening balance in June. I just quickly want to write there June if it allows me 2015. There you go. It did allow me. I think it's the 30th, if I'm not mistaken. Thick. Opening balance is the 1st of June. Apologies, is the 1st of June. Um, one more important thing is that that balance must always be equal to that balance. Okay. Uh, there you go. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them on my cell number via WhatsApp or email address. Thank you.